this presentation covers the homework for Module 4, Lesson 11. Of course, I'm not going to do the homework with you, for you, but I am going to help you get set up. Some of these problems are, are very complex, and they also relate back to, or at least several of them relate back to the practice set, and I'll tell you which practice set problems relate to the specific homework problems to give you a little bit more guidance than what I have here. So if you need a little bit more help, refer back to the Module 4, Lesson 11 practice set presentation. Number two in your homework is very similar to number two in the problem set. So if you need additional guidance beyond what I give you here, uh, feel free to refer to that. Let's read the problem. A plus auto body is painting designs on a customer's car. They had 18 paints of, or 18 pints of blue paint on hand. They used half of it for flames and one third of it for sparks. They need seven and three fourths pints of blue paint to paint the next design. How many more pints of blue paint will they need to buy? Well, there's a couple ways we can do this. I'm going to start with the tape diagram. Then we're going to look at our fractions and do some thinking. We have 18 pints. Now I want to look at these two fractions. I have one half for flames. I have one third for sparks. Now I am going to find the common denominator for these two. And that would be six. So the flames, one half of the flames equals three sixths and the sparks equals 2 6. Now I can take my tape diagram and I can partition it into six equal parts and do a little thinking. So I have my flames. I have my sparks. And this is what's left. So this is again the two of these together is what I used and again, that last part is what is left. Well, look at the fractional part of that. We can see that we have, uh, represented by the L, a fractional part of the original 18 pints. So whatever that fraction is, is uh, a fraction of 18 pints. That should tell you that you need to multiply. Once you find your product, your answer, you need to look at the amount of paint that we need and you need to find out how short we are of the seven and three fourths so we need to so to speak add up which is another way to say subtract there's other ways to do this as well we could back this up and we will now consider the other approach is we have one half was used for flames and one third was used for sparks and we can find one half of 18 we can find one third of 18 and we can find out how many ounces are used for the flames and how many ounces are used for the sparks. We can find the sum of those and we can find the total amount used. Once we do that we'll need to again see how much more we need to get up to seven and three fourths. The homework number three is very similar to the practice set number three so if you need additional guidance you can refer back to it. Let's read Giovanna, Francis, and their dad each carried a 10-pound bag of soil into the backyard. After putting soil in the first flower bed, Giovanna's was five-eighths full, Francis's bag was two-fifths full, and their dad's was three-fourths full. How many pounds did they put in the first flower bed all together? We're going to, just like Jack, Jill, and Bill, we're going to make uh, three tape diagrams. all the same length. I'll bracket the top one, but we know that these are all 10.
Okay, Giovannis was five eighths full when she was done. So if we have five eighths left, how much was dumped out? That would be three eighths. And Francis was two fifths full. So how much did she dump out? That would be three fifths. And Dad was three fourths full. How much did he dump out? This much. Well, we want to know how much they dumped out into that first flower bed altogether. We know that we have fractional parts of 10. So all we have to do is find the three fractional parts separately for Giovanna, Francis, and Dad. Uh, then once we find the fractional part and multiply it by 10, we will have the amount of soil that each of them dumped in that first garden. And of course, that's all together, so we'll have to find the sum of the three add-ends. Okay, this one's really tough. And it doesn't relate to anything that we have from the problem set, so I'm going to give you a lot of guidance with the modeling. Let's read it. Mr. Chan made 252 cookies for the annual 5th grade bake class bake sale. They sold three-fourths of them, and three-ninths of the remaining cookies were given to PTA members. Mr. Chan allowed the 12 student helpers to divide the cookies that were left equally. How many cookies will each student get? We're going to make a big old tape diagram, and we're going to break this down into many parts. Now, I like to actually illustrate the steps using a series of tape diagram. So here's the original amount of cookies. We have 252. We sold three-fourths, so we're going to partition my tape diagram into four equal parts, and these are sold. This is what's left. Now, three-ninths of the remaining cookies were given to PTA uh, members. Well, I know that three-ninths is one-third, so I'm going to make my life a little simpler here. And we'll say that this went to the PTA. And what's left of that? is the amount of cookies that are split by the 12 students. I'll put a 1, a 2, and a 12. And we want to know how big each uh, portion is. So what do we do? What, what's represented here? Well, first we have to find. Well, what's, what's left here? It's 1 fourth of 252. Then we have to find this portion which is what's split among the kids. So we have to find two-thirds of this one-fourth. And then what we do is whatever this amount is that's left, we have to break it into 12 equal parts. Fairly complex, but I think with this modeling, we can show you the steps. We definitely have one, two, three steps. And... I don't think you should have too much difficulty given this amount of guidance.